Earth without ozone is like a house without a roof. Greetings, everyone. I am Ruthish Talk Class 10th Day, and I welcome you all to today's webinar. Today, we are celebrating International Day for the Preservation of Ozone Layer. So let's know more about the ozone layer through a video. the video interesting. So as we all know that ozone layer is a protective shield that protects the earth's surface from sun's harmful UV radiations. Let's imagine that is our earth and its outer covering is our atmosphere. If a hole occurs on the outer covering of the fruit, then the whole fruit rots. Similarly, if anything happens to our ozone layer, then our whole earth will be in great danger. That's why it's very important to prevent further depletion of our ozone layer and protect our ozone layer. With a weakening of the ozone layer, we will be more prone to cancer, cataracts, and immune deficiency disorders. That's why it's very important to prevent depletion of our ozone layer. Every year, we celebrate Ozone Day on 16th September to spread awareness among the people about depletion of ozone layer. And through today's webinar, we would like to throw some light on our ozone layer. So I would like to share the PPT for the same. Our atmosphere is the blanket of air surrounding the earth. Now, I would like to invite Mokshita to tell us more about the atmosphere. Thank you so much, Pratishtha. So as she told that our ozone layer has been depleting day by day and it is the responsibility of human mankind to prevent it. But the question is, is only ozone layer present in our environment? Of course not. There are many several other layers present in our atmosphere at different level because of the different temperatures and density in it. And I think the human mankind must be aware of them. So let me explain each of the layer one by one. In total, there are total five layers in our atmosphere, that is troposphere, exosphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. So the very first layer and the closest layer towards our Earth's surface is troposphere, and we can see many of the flying airplanes in it. Now, the second layer is stratosphere, which lies above the troposphere and the only layer where we can find our ozone. So it is obvious that most of the sun's ultraviolet radiations get absorbed here. Now, the third layer is mesosphere, which lies above the stratosphere and the coldest layer of the Earth's atmosphere. This is the place where most of the meteors burns up before crashing. Now, the fourth layer is thermosphere and the hottest layer of our Earth's atmosphere as it absorbs most of the sun's radiation. And it also works as an orbit of satellites for many Earths. Now, the last and the outermost layer of the Earth's atmosphere is exosphere, which holds most of the sun's light gases like helium, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Now, I would like to invite Pranka for further elaboration of ozone layer. Thank you, Mokshita, for explaining us the different layers of the atmosphere. Now, the question arises that what exactly is the ozone layer? It is the layer present in the Earth's stratosphere around 15 to 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface that contains high levels of ozone. This layer is a shield for Earth as it protects the Earth from sun's harmful UV radiations. Ozone at higher levels of the atmosphere is a product of UV radiations acting on the uh, oxygen molecule. The UV uh, uh, radiational energy split apart some molecule oxygen into free oxygen atoms, then combine with the oxygen molecule to form ozone. Continuing further, when chlorine and bromine atoms come in contact with the ozone in the stratosphere, they destroy the ozone molecule. And one chlorine molecule atom can destroy one lakh molecules of ozone before it is naturally created. 
Now, I would like to invite Piyush to continue further for us. Thank you for inviting me. All right. After hearing so much stuff about Earth's atmosphere, ozone layer, let's move towards an important question. What actually is ozone layer depletion? The balance has been disrupted due to the enhancement of ozone degradation by chlorofluorocarbon CFC. Man-made things such as refrigerators, air conditioner, paint, etc. have degraded the ozone to some extent. CFCs discharge in the lower part of the atmosphere, move upward and reach stratosphere. These can, these can cause pores to form in the layer and allow more ultraviolet radiations to reach the Earth's surface. As a result of this, there will be an increase in Earth's temperature, melting of glaciers, cancerous diseases, rise in the level of ocean, and many, many more. Now, during the discussion, a new word was introduced, ozone hole. So what is it? The chemicals containing bromine and chlorine atoms are released to the atmosphere through human activity. These chemicals combine with certain weather conditions to cause reaction in the ozone layer, leading to ozone molecules being destroyed. Depletion of the ozone layers occur globally. However, the severe depletion of the ozone layer over the Antarctic is often referred to as the ozone hole. Increased depletion has recently started occurring over the Arctic as well. And this ozone hole covers a huge area of 27 million square kilometers. So now let's take a look at this graphic which tells us how an ozone hole actually looks like. Now, I'd like Tejas Vini to put some light on the effects of the ozone layer depletion. Thank you, Piyush. So, as it is rightly said by Piyush that ozone layer is depleting day by day, and ozone layer depletion causes increase in UV radiation level at Earth's surface, which is damaging to human health. Negative effects include increases in certain type of skin cancers, eye cataracts and immune deficiency disorders. Chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs are the main cause of ozone layer depletion. These are released by sprays, refrigerators, air conditioners, etc. And the molecules of CFCs in the stratosphere are broken down by UV radiations and release chlorine atoms. And once, if the ozone layer is depleted, ultraviolet rays will pass through troposphere and eventually to the Earth. And these rays cause aging in humans as well as animals, and also cause skin cancer, cataract, sunburn. Phytoplankton uh, is a microscopic marine algae, dies in the presence of ultraviolet radiation and result in decrease in fish productivity. And now this is the time to think until it's too late. Now I would like Mokshita to tell the solutions. So this was about ozone layer depletion. Now, what we can do to prevent this ozone layer depletion? In further, there are many re uh, solutions to prevent this. Let me explain two of them. The first and the most popular solution is tree planting. It helps in the reduction of greenhouse gases and also decreases the surface temperature. Now, the second one is recycle and reuse. Recycling non-biodegradable waste will contribute a lot to help reduce air pollution and house gases that depletes the ozone layers and recycling reduces waste products in landfills. Now, I would like to invite Piyush for continuation. Avoid the consumption of gases dangerous to the ozone layer. Avoid the consumption of gases dangerous to the ozone layer due to their content or manufacturing process. Some of the most dangerous gases are CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, halogenated hydrocarbons, methyl bromide and nitrous oxide. Minimize the use of cars. The best transport option is the public transport, bicycle or walking. If you use a car to a destination, try to carpool it with others to decrease the use of cars in order to pollute less and save the ozone layer. Now, I'd like Priyanka to continue. Thank you, Piyush and Mokshita for telling us some solutions for the ozone depletion. Now I would like to add a few. 
These days, we know that many cleaning products contain solvents and substances which are very corrosive to the nature. And we can easily replace these hazardous substances with non-toxic and organic products like vinegar, bicarbonate, and organic detergents. We can buy local products and in this way, we will not only get fresh products, but also avoid consuming food that has traveled long distances. As the more distance traveled, the more nitrous oxide is produced due to the medium used to transport that product. Now, I would like Pratishtha to come forward and conclude for us. Thank you, Priyanka. I would like to conclude by saying that there is no doubt that the problem of ozone depletion exists and it deserves extensive research and attention. For that, we all need to come together and develop solutions for the same. And with the release of each and every CFC, our ozone layer takes one small step towards its destruction. The decision to ban CFC completely cannot be decided by the US or even the United Nations. So the entire world must unite in order to expel this problem forever. We all need to come together to find solutions for ozone depletion. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the webinar. I hope you all enjoyed.